monster, and now we're trying to tame it. I'm not anti-vax, I'm pro-choice, which is a phrase that's rapidly becoming the 2021 equivalent of I'm not racist, but... Want to know something else Lee doesn't want forced on there? Knowledge. Not much sunshine ahead for people with solar panels. We created a monster, and now we're trying to tame it. The 400,000 West Australians who have rooftop solar panels are creating too much juice, and the WA government doesn't know what to do with it all. So it's come up with a technical solution. What's the solution? It's going to hit the off button. Sounds like advice from the IT department. It's computer 101 when all else fails. It's a last-ditch effort to stop the system exploding. From February 14, if you install solar panels or upgrade your old ones, the government will remotely switch off the system you just paid thousands of dollars to install without asking you. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, that's not going to make Greta very happy. No, but I suspect Greta doesn't understand the intricacies of electron transmission. Blah, blah, blah. The problem with electricity is the grid needs to be in balance. Your generation of power needs to be closely matched to consumption, or else bad stuff happens. Nearly one in three houses in WA have solar panels. When it's sunny, which it will be for the next five months, those systems generate the same amount of electricity as the state's biggest power station. That's fine when it's really hot and everyone's aircon is set at 16 degrees, but when it's mild and power consumption's low, there's too many electrons being poured into the grid and not enough being taken out. Yes, science! Why can't they turn off the power stations? That would stop coal and gas being used. Problem solved. Hmm. You're a scientist. Not. You can't just turn these things off. You can dull them down, but not by enough to make up for the extra juice coming off everyone's roofs, I've been told. Energy Minister Bill Johnson is going to flick the off switch on our solar panels, which will force us to use excess electricity coming out of the big power stations. Lisa, if we start conserving, the environmentalists win. He says it will happen only a few times a year and only for a few hours at a time. So having too much electricity can cause blackouts. Weird, huh? He's also going to limit how much power people with big systems, more than five kilowatts, can pump into the grid. The government has known for a long time that this day was coming. Almost exactly 10 years ago, the then Energy Minister, Peter Collier, he of clan fame, was warned the system was becoming unstable because there were too many solar panels. There were only about 50,000 back then and that was too much. Everyone rushed out to get these things because installation was subsidised and you were paid 40 cents for every kilowatt hour of unused electricity you'd fed back into the grid. It was actually pretty good coin. They had to halve the tariff a year after introducing it because it was so popular and costing so much money and then they had to scrap the payment system entirely. Back then, like now, it was a political headache because governments don't like to be seen to be anti-green. Collier's media man at the time, a guy called Darren Brown, got together with the Barnett government's spin doctor-in-chief, Dixie Marshall, to work out a way to massage the truth. Now that name, Darren Brown, rings a bell. He works for the Association of Volunteer Bushfire Brigades and was recently in the media complaining about how volleys had to get the jab. Before that, he was a blogger a gaming machine lobbyist and a political consultant who cloned an ALP website to benefit the Liberals. And he also used to own a business called Clone a Willy. Wait, what? Which allowed men to create rubber replicas of their penises. What? So it was your usual pokey advocate, genital sculptor, cyber saboteur, energy spin doctor, amateur blogger, political insider for higher career path. OK. Well, few people looking for new careers today. The anti-vaxxers are particularly hysterical at the moment because December 1 is mandate day. A date which will live in infamy. About a thousand people were at state parliament today complaining about the no jab, no job rules that will affect a very long list of occupations. By the looks of things, being professionally gormless is one of the occupations that's affected by the mandate rules. Have a go at this guy. Reckon his views about vaccination are informed by reading the British Medical Journal? No, look it up when you get home. A couple of politicians came out to stir them up. One time Liberal hopeful Andrea Tokaji told the crowd the directions violated the Constitution. What section of the Constitution has been breached? Just the vibe of the thing. Legalised cannabis MP Sophia Mormon warned that government overreach would have long-term consequences, much like excessive consumption of marijuana. This is your brain on drugs. Sophia stressed that I'm not anti-vax, I'm pro-choice, which is a phrase that's rapidly becoming the 2021 equivalent of I'm not racist. But single mum and mining worker Lee Gibbs doesn't like government or big corporations 
dictating what goes into her body. Want to know something else Lee doesn't want forced on her? Knowledge. We heard from some guy who blamed the media for everything. We've seen how vaccine adverse reaction victims can be attacked in the mainstream media, such as what the West Australian newspaper... No apologies there, sport. Government can never take away your inalienable human rights that God has given you. You were born with them. Jesus has set you free and you are free indeed. And wasn't she pleased with herself? <laughs> How's this for a catwalk turn? Brilliant. Brilliant. Where workers have rallied against the vaccine mandate. What they've done here. You really want the truth? You're all f***ing idiots. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.